What's up, everybody? Welcome to Dragoon. Dragoon? Dragon. I'm not 100% sure how to pronounce it. Uh, my name is Sean. This is Twitch.tv slash Sean Sorcerer if you're watching live. If you're watching on YouTube, hey, I stream these games live on Twitch.tv slash Sean Sorcerer There may be a link in the description below. Just scroll down and find out if I put it in there. Who knows? Apparently, that's a thing that a lot of YouTubers do. They're like, I'm going to put the link in the description below. And then you scroll down and there's just nothing there, which I feel like I've been extra bad about lately. Um, but yeah, here we go. We're going to play this game, this mystery game. I don't think it's a particularly long game. I saw like a full play was like two and a half hours. Uh, so I like to try and get through all of it today, but I am still recovering from being sick and I have to take a medication because of it. And the medication does cause drowsiness. So, uh, yeah, let's see. Text language, English subtitles on, on and character names. Yes. Yes. Character colors. Oh, shoot. I am... I'm tempted to go with the... Mm. I kind of wish you could just have both. This music is really nice. Um, I'll go with names. Stack subtitles. Uh, that's fine. Visuals. 1923 mode? What does that mean? Audio. Controls. Okay. That's fine. Maybe that's what 1923 mode is with the kind of the faux film grain sort of thing maybe <clears throat> not 100% sure <clears throat> the ceremonial removing of the Mountain Dew label People must love me in movie theaters when I do that. When I take the label off. I do I do admittedly try to do it when like loud things are happening or during trailers. The water's cold. It's a fjord. You're not going swimming. Boo. You're such a wet blanket, teddy bear. You know I don't like it when you call Edward. me. Edward. Edward Charles Harden, Esquire. Will you promise to behave on land? Do I always? Listen. Promise. Oh, piffle and foam is balonus, Teddy. You ought to know better than to ask. Yes, I'll behave. I'll be a proper young lady. I shan't run or climb things or laugh too loud or call anyone old bean. Aside from you. So, do you think we'll find your Betty in, uh, what did you call this village? Gravelick? Groovewick? Well. Edward knows in his heart that his sister is here, so though it's been months since he last heard from Elizabeth. Edward wonders yet again what drew Elizabeth to this remote Perhaps place so very far away from New York. Viking warrior and went native. Put horns on her hat. Uh -huh. Jeans and She's there. How can you know for sure? She's my sister. But how do you know? I just do. In her letter, she wrote about. But that's months ago. She could have gone anywhere. Without writing. Or telegraphing her editor in New York, she wouldn't do that. Betty's Ooh, the cat's pajamas, the bee's knees, little Miss Perfect. Alice, you're talking about my sister. Fine, I'm sorry. Elizabeth's a darb. We all love her dearly. And Teddy Bear, Edward, we will find her. Betty's fine. Why? We'll see her as soon as we get to shore. She'll shower you with kisses and berate you for coming all this way from Hanover, Massachusetts to the middle of absolutely nowhere Scandinavia way just to chase no her down. Everything will be Jake, old fruit. <sighs> this is going to be a short game if we show up on shore. Is that Groove Wolf? It looks so peaceful. 
and beautiful, and so desolate, like a place built for ghosts. Finally. <laughs> I don't think I could do this for much longer. Can't you row any faster? I'm getting frightfully bored. How about you take over, Alice? <laughs> you slay me, Teddy, old bean. Was that thunder? Still distant. The boat will be in safe harbor by the time the weather arrives. So you say. But I say put your back into it. Because we're sitting ducks out here. Quack, quack. Jeez. <laughs> Fucking row faster, an asshole. Nice briefcase. It's so quiet. Where is everyone? How heavy is Probably that thing? Working. I know it's a foreign concept to you, but that's something normal people do. I fucking got him. I just want to get on the boat and leave. Up the hill somewhere. Up where? I believe it's that farmhouse, all the way at the top. Hot dog. Let's ankle. Hold on. Let me read the letter from Mrs. Fretland first. I'll meet you up there, old sport. I want to explore. Last one's a skunk's tail. Be careful. The ground's muddy. You could slip and fall. I'll see you in two shakes. Okay. Dear Mr. Harden, we would like to extend an invitation to visit our home. Trouble to hear of your sister's disappearance. No news to share. You'll find our farm on top of the hill. I hope I got that right. Look forward to seeing you here in October. Yours faithfully, Anna Fretland. Well, I'm here. Where are you? Did you make it to Grovik, Betty? And why did you pick this? Forlorn hole under the mountains. Edward D. breathes a lot. Teddy, are you coming? I'm almost there. Oh God, you're so slow, Teddy. Righto, step to it, Teddy Bear. Press R B. Where are you, Lissy? Oh, okay. Thought there'd be something cool over here. Uh, there is not. Just a... Thing? I don't know. All right, so we're on this island, and now... Oh, it says Nicholas Bolton as Edward. I bet the thing's going to move. Oh, okay. Sky Bennett as Alice. Rest. Just taking a break. Hurry up. Storm's getting closer. Dragon. <clears throat> Dragon. Rest. Okay, here we go. Moving on. Rest.
Ouch. My knee. My precious knee. And you're all the way up here? God. Just rode for who knows how long and all of a sudden I'm You know you can put your briefcase on the ground, right? Then we can rest at this fence post. Seriously? You're not the one carrying a suitcase. This is a weird spot to take a rest. I made it all the way up this hill, written and directed by Ragnar Tornquist. took you so long i'm not 17 nor are you 70. put some spring into your step old sport did you see the flag it's a half mast someone died so this is it huh nice days but seriously where is everyone inside this maybe starting to creep me out. the weather's getting worse edward thinks it wouldn't the weather's getting worse, Edward thinks, and it wouldn't surprise him if the villagers have sought shelter. Have There's no sign of people out on the fjord, but he was focused on keeping the oars in the water. Story. The one about the empty ship drifting in the open sea? That story. He finds silence odd, but these... I'd guess they're inside. Perhaps everyone's indoors. The rain's picking up. You first, old bee. Okay. Hello? Anyone there? Mr. Fretland? Mrs. Fretland? This is Edward Charles Harden, the American. We've exchanged letters. Maybe they went on holiday and left the door open. Give it a shake and a rattle. You can't just barge into their home. It's not a crime if you're invited. I'm coming in. This is... Uh... This is Mr. Harden. And a cheap boot. Is anyone home? This house is as empty as a bird's nest in December. Hey, you want to check out the upstairs? <coughs> Why? There's no light coming from upstairs, and the house is clearly empty. Or no. Feels uneasy about intruding. Eh. I'm a guest. Why would I start poking around every corner of the house? I don't know. Maybe they're playing hide-and-go-seek. Well, I didn't want to go upstairs anyway. It's creepy. There must be a sitting room on this floor. A sitting room? Okay, so can you change... Oh, settings? On. Oh, that's exactly what it does. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. I'm glad I picked like a really dark area to experiment with that. Neat. That's really neat. I'm not going to use it, but it's cool that it's there. Oh, this is nice. Charmingly rustic. 
The Boston Beaumont would pay a pretty penny for this setup. I thought foreigners lived differently. This is almost like an American home. People are people wherever you go. Thanks, Proust. <laughs> There's the stave church. Do you think that's where they've all gone? Maybe there's a very popular funeral. Yeah. It was at half mast, but no sign of life out there. Sounds like a Star Trek character. There's uh, no sign of life out there, Captain. Look, family pictures. They must be the. Uh, what did you call them? He hasn't seen any photographs of the Fretlands yet, but it's clearly them. His familiarity with, familiarity with their hosts comes only from the letters he exchanged with Mrs. Fretland. The Fretlands. Right. Anna and John? Johan. This is honestly not what I'd pictured. They're very presentable. Not at all like turnip farmers. They're not turnip farmers. That must be Johann Fretland, master of the house. What makes you think he's the master of anything? It's 1923, Teddy old boy. Women can vote. Okay. Betty might be with the Fretlands, wherever they are. Wouldn't Anna Fretland have written you? She might have. We left Hanover a month ago. Wait, is that... Are they... It, who's... They're all twins. All of them. That's Johan and Anna Fretland. There are two of each, Edward. Two of each. Frederick and Margaret. Twins marrying twins. <laughs> My mind's reeling. This is just too adorable. May 26th, 1899. We'll be celebrating their silver anniversary next year. Well, good for them. Love isn't dead in 1923. Well, not yet. The books are all in English. Isn't that a bit odd? Mrs. Fretland is Scottish, though she grew up in Aldersund. Have you been secretly communicating with Johann's winsome wife, Edward Dearest? Certainly not. She was the one who wrote me, because Mr. Fretland's English I was isn't as... Only joking. Lighten up. I would never fuck another man's wife. <clears throat> this main character is like kind of boring. What are you looking at there? A book. Strange place for a book. Unless it was a terrible book that deserved a good burning. What's the title? The cover is charred. It's a weird title of a book. Christmas 1922. To Ruth from Simon. Why would someone burn this? Like I said, maybe it was a terrible book. Is Simon one of the Freddy Landers? I don't think so. They only have the one daughter. Hmm. Okay. Where do you think they've gone? The Fretlands. The Fretlands, the Hansons, the Jensens, all of them. I'm sure they'll be back soon. It's like a dead land. As though its soul has departed. It's really coming down. How about a quick run in the rain? You can't be serious. You're already a wet blanket, teddy bear. It's not like you'll get any wetter. I fucking got him. <laughs> we can see the whole village from up here. Do you want to go sightseeing? Tomorrow. It's getting late. And the rain's not abating. God, remember when she roasted him? You're a fucking wet blanket, Teddy. You suck. Oh, I can't find my sister. Where? Oh, those boys look proud as peacocks. What does it say there? Groovy? Groovin. The mine. Maybe that's where everyone is. Digging for precious jewels in the Stygian Abyss. From what I learned of this place during the brief stay in Olesund, the iron mine shut down 20 years ago.
The mine was only in operation until 1902. They must have lost a fortune. An iron mine wouldn't pay itself off in five years. Can we go spelunking? Perhaps we'll find trolls in the abyss, and we can steal their ill-gotten gold. There was a cave-in. It'll be unsafe. Oh, boo. Frederick and Johann Fretland, founders of the Fretland Brothers Mining Company. They're the spitting image of each other. Twin brothers and business partners. And they married twin sisters. Adorable. Who's the boy? He looks related to the other two. Hmm. Who is the boy? Uh oh, doing some reading here. Johann Fretland exits Fretland Brothers Mining Company. So the brothers parted ways? Johann sold his share to focus on farming. That must have put a damper on their relationship. Tragic accident befalls the Fretland Brothers Mining Company. What happened? The mine collapsed, killing three workers, including Arna Fretland, Frederick and Johann's younger brother. That's awful. How old was he? Uh, 19. He might be the boy in the photograph. Hmm? Operations were suspended after the accident. That would make sense. Foreign investors out of Frederick Fretland's mining company. Dire financial consequences for Fretland, who must have had a difficult time after his brother Johann Fretland pulled out earlier this year. Johann was smart to exit when he did. Timing is curious. Like he knew something was about to go awry. Interesting. Piecing it together here. Oof. That's a grim sight, old bean. What a dork. I'm exhausted. And soaked to the bone. Let's get you to bed. We'll wait for the Fretlands. It's only courteous. Yeah. Betty. Have you gone screwy again, Teddy? That's not Betty. That's... A scarf. I'd know it anywhere. It doesn't look like anything to me. It just looks like... bought it in like Bloomingdale's the Christmas before last. When she came home that year, she showed it off, dancing around the sitting room until I got dizzy watching her. I think you're misremembering. She couldn't make it home that year. Again. No. I'm... You're wrong. I'm sure she was there. Whatever. It's not like you pay any attention to me when Betty's around. I might just as well be a ghost. What is happening here? What is your fucking problem? Also, why is she only 17? Look, <clears throat> it is her scarf. It even smells like her perfume. Shalimar. But what if that's not... She's here. I'm finally going to find her. That's... God, that's great, Edward. Really, I... I wouldn't want you to get your hopes up. I mean, where's everyone gone to? Something's not right, I'm telling you. Teddy? Edward, what's wrong? I... Lightheaded, that's all. You're having another spell. You know what happens when you exert yourself. Sit down. That's an order from your commander. Yes. Fine. Okay. I will sit down. I just need to... Catch my breath. Just for a moment. I want you to lie down. Lie down and close your eyes. It's been a strenuous day. What with the rowing and the dragging of the suitcase up the hill. Well, what if the fret... I'll keep an eye out. I promise. If they come home, I'll wake you. Now, lie down. Close your eyes. Breathe deeply. I'm just...
Okay, that's the end of the game. We found her. We found that scarf. She's here. Just take a quick nap. Call it good. Elizabeth? Is that you? Betty? Lissy? Lissy, are you here? Lissy? Okay, it's just the... Uh... No, oh, Jesus God. Betty? Fuck. Elizabeth. Betty. I hate this. Oh. Listen, there's someone outside. It might be Betty. It might be. Oh. Here, God damn it. Are you in here, Lissy? I don't want to turn. I don't want to turn. Hmm. Who's out there? <sighs> Hello? No. Betty? No, it's all foggy. Why? I didn't think this game was going to be spooky. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm not alone. Lizzie. I didn't. I, oh man! I just wanted to play a relaxing mystery game. Find my sister. Call it good. Now it's all foggy. I can hear you. It's just a bird. Just a bird. It's just a. It's just a bird. It's just a bird. I can't even see the house anymore. Oh God! That stupid thunderclap. So spoopy. It's too spoopy. Okay, don't run in the mud. You'll fall. Someone there? Why did he look so far up? Yeah, of course you were gonna slip and fall, idiot. It's muddy, stupid. Get your Harry Potter glasses and let's get the hell out of here. Can we go home now? Elizabeth, are you there? Edward's not happy with her wandering off on her own after the dark. Uh, Edward isn't sure he heard her correctly. What happened to the boat? He's certain. He saw his sister. I don't. I'm not certain. What about the boat? It's gone. The boat. What? How? Maybe you didn't secure it properly. I pulled it up. I don't know. 
I thought I tied it securely, but... Where did you go? Out? For a walk. It stopped raining and... Did you see Betty? Did I see... What are you talking about? I, I think... Betty... It was Betty, I... It was her. It must have been her. I saw her face in the window and... And she vanished into the dark towards the sea. You really didn't see anyone. I haven't seen a single soul. Are you sure it was her and yes, not... I... I mean... I saw her face and... It looked like her. Well, if it was her, why did she run away? Uh, I don't... I don't know. Uh, it's getting dark. Back to the house. Then tomorrow... Tomorrow's another day. Figure it out. Right now, let's get you cleaned up. Look at you. You've got mud all over yourself. Yeah, because you slipped and fell, you idiot. You need to sleep. You must be exhausted. Come on. Oh, good. Thanks for making. Thanks for not making me go all the way back up to the house. I'm already scared enough. I don't need to be more scared. <clears throat> Bonk. Good morning, Edward. I will find you again. Okay. Good. Good for you, buddy. Proud of you. All right. Okay. Sure. Yep. That's what I want to do. I want to go outside. Sounds fun. Yeah. I'll go outside up here with this fence where no one can get me. Oh, so you can just kind of explore the house. Except for that room. Can't go in there. Okay. <coughs> Oh, that's probably the sex dungeon, I would assume. Weird that it's on the second floor, but... You know, to each their own. No kink shame in here. Crayoka. <laughs> what the fuck? Ooh, you can play the piano. Fun. Give me an achievement.
What a jam. Achieving a hundred gamer score, hell yeah, baby. What do you mean, X? Why can't I read this? All right. <clears throat> Just about giving up on you ever waking up. I was looking around the house. So we're okay with that now? Noted. I got an achievement. Well, I dreamed of Betty. She was in the garden. And she called for me. How about you, Lissy dearest? Oh, you know me, old fruit. Wide awake at first light. The Fretlands didn't come home, did they? They did not. There's no sign of anyone. Aside from last night's Miss Walker. I've been thinking about that. I... He's still confused about what happened last night. Did he only see shadows in the night? He's still confused about the events of the previous night. Was it real? And... Or what was real and what was imagined? You were about to say something. looked like Betty. I was so sure. She wouldn't have run away. It makes no sense. Perhaps it was <clears> no one. <throat> Just the night playing tricks. Well, there must be someone here. And I'm not talking about ghosts. <coughs> or goats. What was it you said yesterday? Maybe they're peeking at us through the windows. I'll take a gander. The Fretlands will be home soon. And Betty's here. I know it. I feel it. If you say so, Teddy Bear. Have you had your noodle juice yet? I'm not rummaging through their cupboards. You'll be a pill without your tea and toast, old bean. We need to get you sorted. I'm not hungry. First point on the agenda. Find the natives. A mission! Not dog! I'll scout ahead. I'll meet you down by those houses. Okay, see you later. Let's uncover your secrets, Glow. All right, so we have a little bit of a notebook here. August 4th, 1923. <clears throat> Put on my big boy reading voice here. Dear Mr. Harden, I hope this letter finds you well. Wait, who wrote this? Oh, Anna. Okay, okay. Let's try this again. Dear Mr. Harden, I hope this letter finds you well. I hope it came across that I just did the same voice. Uh, my husband, Johan, and I received your letter from July 9th. We would like to extend an invitation... Uh, to visit our home this Octo October. Do not worry about being an inconvenience as we only, uh, as, oh, as we have only one child, our daughter Ruth, and plenty of room for a visitor. We were troubled to hear of your sister Elizabeth's disappearance. Unfortunately, I have no news to share, nor do I believe she's landed in Gravik yet. Uh, I have made inquiries and shall send you another letter if there's word. Oh, great. I'm sure that'll get there. Really, just send a text next time, okay? I'm certain she's all right, however, and that she's simply been delayed on her journey. In regards of your travels, I'm afraid there's no longer a ferry from uh, Alsend? Als Alsend to Gravik, so you will need to find your own transport across the fjord. When you arrive, you'll find our farm at the top of the hill. There's a road from the landing and... What? There's a road from the landing and up past the general store. Okay. Our farmhouse house won't be... Our farmhouse won't be hard to see. It's the largest house in the village. Fucking big dick swinging over here. <laughs> Our big old fucking house. That's cool. You won't miss it because it's the biggest one on the island. Please write again when you've settled 
on your travel plans or receive word uh, of, of your sister. My husband and I very much look forward to seeing you here in October. Yours faithfully, Anna Fretland. Okay, so this is all we really have. We have a little map. Our boat's dead and gone. We have a little bit of a player marker. How do I... Okay, press up to bring up your journal. All right, cool. I look forward to taking copious notes during this. So there's one thing I love. It's old R to jog, but you're old, apparently. Where are you? I'm by the village houses. Okay. Up here, Teddy. Such a beautiful day. You could bottle and sell this air in Boston. It's frankly medicinal. It's like weed. Be careful you don't fall. You suck the fun out of everything, old boy. We're far from any doctor. I don't want you to hurt yourself. That's not very likely. She slips out of the tree and like breaks her back. She's like, you were right. Oh, fuck. Ahead. It's all over. I think I'm doing vantage point. Like on a pirate ship. I can probably <coughs> see our house in Hanover from here. Did you check those buildings? Knocking on doors isn't a scout's job, old dude. Oh, okay. Hello? Anyone here? Why, hello, Mr. American. Please come in for a cup of tea and biscuits. You're not helping. Also, they drink coffee here, not tea. <gasps> Savages. No one home? Yeah. No one home. Hello? Who? Who's there? Why is this game scary? Why is it spooky? Uh, no, 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 you. Hello? Anyone home? Is there anything really even worth looking at? Do I go in this door? Oh, read. Okay. September 21st, 1923. Air Desperata. Lissy, found something here. Escalated from words to stones. Blood has been spilled. The curse haunts us all. There is no hope left in uh, Gitzbalata. Gitz. God. Right. In this godforsaken place the death of the chimney the death of the children was the end of Brothik whatever remained of our souls departed with them you should see this Lissy the letter just trails off it was never sent yeah no shit it was never sent it's just laying on this table man See this door closing? It was just the wind, Teddy Bear. You're as skittish as a pussy cat. There's one more house. Third time's the charm. Yeah, third time's the charm. Exactly. That's. Uh, fuck. Anyone home? Unless they're playing hide and go seek, I'd say that's a no. I can I can open this door. I can open it. I'm gonna open it. All right, great, cool. This won't end well, or poorly, I should say. Three strikes, you're out. I don't think anyone's been home for a while. Someone painted the word traitor on one of the doors, and there was a letter. 
It sounded foreboding. Well, you were wrong. The villagers are not indoors. He's only seen a small part of the village, he thinks. There's still many places to visit. Elizabeth is the sole reason he's here, and he can't lose sight of that. The boat still bothers him like a fly buzzing in his ear. There's no good reason for it to simply vanish. I saw some sheds down by the water. There's the general store. The church. In other words, time for some sightseeing? Well, it's a bright and beautiful day, and we have nothing better to do. What on earth are you doing? Handstands, Teddy. My record is two minutes. I'm working on three. Just go on ahead. I'll catch up. Okay, so we'll go down. We'll check the general store. Go to that church. Knock her over. Push. Push over. Push. She's like, what the fuck, Teddy? Why would you fucking push me? I was trying to do three minute handstand. Probably more the way to the church. Hang on. Bring up that journal. Alright. Should we want to go this way? Get our jog on here. For as long as he can run, which I'm assuming is not very far because he's old, apparently. I don't know. Where the fuck did you come from? Hunt? Harvest? Forage? People have survived here for centuries. Why can't we? I wouldn't even know where to begin. I could learn. I'd start with goats. Goats can be eaten. And milk. Probably not in that order. They had a memorial service for the accident in the mine. On July 24th, in the village church. For something that happened 20 years ago? It still affected their lives. <laughs> okay. The ferry route is no longer operating. Rats! Mrs. Fratland already informed me in her letter. I know. Still warrants a resounding rats. I wonder why it stopped running. Look around. How many people live here? 20? 30? That can't be enough for a ferry route. Things got quieter after the mine closed down. Oh, okay. On and find something else to put that village on the map. Mm, a tobacco farming, maybe. His arm's still sore from the trip across the fjord. He won't soon forget the ordeal. He pities the village, disconnected as it uh, is from the world outside. But he sees the parallels to himself, disconnected from humanity. Okay. Ferry would have made the trip here much easier. And you wouldn't have had to pay that farmer a fortune to rent his boat. I had no choice. We should keep his boat. If it comes back. Bring it with us to Hanover. <laughs> Do what with it exactly? I don't know. Throw parsley in it? Use it in the... in the pond? Forget it. Stupid idea. He must have been so isolated. With no easy way in or out. Aren't there boats? He saw how much worth it was to cross the fjord. And if the weather is bad... You can't be healthy, being so isolated. Cooped up inside, reading the collected morphs. Yeah, <laughs> all right. I get this it. This village is basically new to me. I said, all right. The telegraph is out of order. Well, there goes my plan. N-O-S-O-S. -S. This was two years ago, but the notice is still up. 
How can it take two years to get something like that fixed? Because they couldn't afford it? Or couldn't get anyone to come fix it? Well, this place really is off the map. Here be dragons. Or dragons. I guess. <laughs> Okay, let's go into the scary shop. That's all right. Do that. We can look at the window. Fretland and Son. How do you figure? It's on the sign above the entrance, and on this photograph, Frederick and Simon Fretland. Frederick Fretland and Son. Johann's brother and nephew. The Fretlands have their fingers in all the pies, including the only store in town. Also, the post office and telegraph. There may be something that will lead us to Betty in there. There right, might be. Can sardines. We need to get you fed, old bean. I don't want my toast and coffee. Oh no, shoot. Why lock any doors? I can't imagine they have a problem with punks and hoodlums. The sign says they're closed, but... I thought maybe. Hello? Are you open? Is anyone there? Can't you just bust down the door? Locks be damned. Breaking and entering, I will not. I'll just dislocate my shoulder. Well, that's convenient. Nothing back there. Betty would have taken plenty of constitutionals here. She loves the outdoors. How so? She's a city girl. I'm sure she gets tired of Manhattan. And when she was little, she loved playing in the garden back in Hanover, especially around the... the pond. Are you alright? I just miss her. So are we not supposed to go in here? Hmm. Hello. Okay, so the animation doesn't change. Fine. It's just this window. Yeah, you have to be able to get in here. Shoot, how do you... Okay. Well, maybe go down here a little bit? Hmm. I mean, that, that writing on the wall is going to come in, into play, I bet. Without Betty. Edward can't help can't help notice the gaping hole in the bow. The boat is unusable. With some dismay, Edward observes that the wood is rotten. It was years since his boat was seaworthy. Besides, there's a hole in this boat. It'll sink before it gets ten yards from shore. It's curious. The state of the boat. It's like they stopped taking care of them. Seems short-sighted. How would they fish? Or get anywhere at all? That's not a good sight. All right. I read that? What's this? Remnants of the mining operation. What? Mine? Remember, I, I told you yesterday. There was a mine here, but it closed down 20 years ago. I know, Edward. I was just checking for a sense of humor. 
they're nowhere to be found. I don't understand why they just leave this here. I'm like an altar to adversity. It's creepy. Rustic superstition. Perhaps they believed they'd attract bad luck if they moved it. <coughs> what did they use this for? Bringing the ore down from the mine before it was loaded onto boats. So, diamonds? Gold? Or just boring old silver? Iron ore. Or what? Rock, which contained iron I know. deposits that... I... <sighs> okay, Edward. Edward's like the most plain person in the world. He's never heard a joke. He's like the he's the worst person to ever go to a stand up comedy show. He just sits there with a furrowed brow, arms crossed, miserable the whole time. Well, none of this is very funny. Draw. Is that it? Was that all he drew? He wasn't even looking that way. Okay. tracks lead to the mine where else would they go i don't know a castle up in the mountains where the frost giants live and this is how they receive their monthly offering of meat from the villagers goat i hope That's odd they... No trespassing for traitors. Cool. Want to jump the gate and explore what's on the other side? Edward isn't particularly enthused by the idea of climbing the fence and braving the path uphill. He considers the rickety gate to Eddie? be... Hello? God dang it. Uh, overgrown. Ba -da -ba -da. It's not safe. Oh, horse <clears throat> man in this country what is your sense of adventure old sport don't you want to see where these tracks go they lead to the old mine and no i've had enough adventure on this side of the fence besides they wrote no trespassing for a reason you're such a terrible bore teddy bear i'll wager a thousand clams you'll jump this gate at some point if you believe betty's on the other side frederick fretland who are these traitors he refers to? Yeah, I'm not supposed to go there yet. Didn't look like either of those answers were gonna work. 
Okay, so... Maybe go to the old church? It's kind of, it's, hmm. I'm going to take one more peek around the general store. Betty's hat. She was here. She could still be in there. Betty? Uh, Betty? Are you sure, Edward? I mean, it's just a hat. Is it even a hat? I'm not I know sure my I... sister's hat, Lissy. I have to get inside. What about the breaking and entering part? I could care less what they call it. Okay. Edward's very annoying. Weird. Here's an open window. You seem eager to break the law. I see. Pull, motherfucker. It won't budge. Oh, don't be a milk toast. Well, it's stuck. Atta boy, Teddy. You can do this. I can't believe I'm actually breaking. Whoops, Daisy. Oh. Oh my, Teddy. You're such a sap. Hello? Do you want to maybe. Did you hear the thud? Edward Charles Hardy, dilettante, world traveler, cat burglar. A cat burglar would, by definition, enter a building on a Jeez. higher floor. The state of this place. Oh, Betty. Edward. I hope you weren't here when. Is this. blood? Not necessarily human blood. Well, that's all right then. What does it say? Barn murder? Someone murdered a barn? <laughs> barn means child. And mortar, that's. Child murder. Edward. They murdered a child? Someone thought so. Probably the same someone who vandalized the store. I'm not sure how I feel about being in here. Don't be ridiculous. We're all alone. What else do you suggest we do? Johan's gone. At least, I assume he's the one who's been snipped. Frederick clearly did not want anything to do with his twin brother. Well, if the one, the third brother died, I'd imagine that he holds a quite a lot of resentment. Damnation. The hat's in here. Calm down, old boy. Anyway, how's the hat going to help us? Who knows what else is in here? There could be more clues. All right. Okay. Everything's great. We made it into the store. I'm sure we'll find a way through that door. Out of order. Why hasn't it been fixed? Perhaps there wasn't much demand for it anymore. S. O. S. He wants to be at least 10 envelopes. He notices all of them stamped and addressed, but stuck in perpetual limbo. Okay. Or, even better, order some hot grub. These were never sent. How long have they been piling up? I received Mrs. Fretland's letter in June. A couple of months. Perhaps the world forgot about Grovick. Grovick. What are you 
doing? Looking for keys. Your life of crime continues. There's a note. Is it written in Viking runes? What does it say? It's from Simon. Casa. I don't know what that word means. Yai put it means I put. Nurkel is key. He put the key in the casa? Casa. I wish I had my dictionary. The note's addressed to his father. So the key was moved. But where to? Somewhere safer. Or more convenient. Can we really trust your translations? You only started studying a month ago. I spent the summer reading. And I had a lot of free time on the ocean voyage. Come on, how much could you possibly pick up in a few months? You know my mind, it's a sponge. Okay. To Simon from Ruth. Similar names to the book that we saw earlier. keep a shit l uh, a list of undesirables okay so the keys So now I need to, now what, find a dictionary? Not letting me progress. Progress. Alright, so, yeah, that's, okay. Good design. Thank you, game. It's a stool. Casa. Casa, casa, casa. Hmm. Kind of... Sure, we have lanterns, bags. Oh, register. Oh, oh, oh. So that's what it means. Cash register. Six sixty nine. Nice. Oh, 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 they put the sex number in there. Oh man. You're a genuine gangster now, old fruit. Don't worry. If you get busted, I'll come visit you in the big house. Wasn't there supposed to be a key? Here it is. I didn't even look at the register. I like move right past it cool i really appreciate the game like it looks like it'll let you go but it won't because you don't have the thing that you need which is also a cool clue that it's in the current area you don't have to like come back it is her hat teddy uh, i'm not betty sure betty was that's... here and not long ago okay if that is her hat, what's it doing in a locked storeroom? Another breadcrumb. That's not an answer. I know for sure she was here. That's what matters. You know best, Edward. So, what now? If this is a breadcrumb, where's the next one? 
There must be a reason her hat's in this room. That letter. A handwritten note. Not blind. What does it say, you silly goose? It's hard to read. I'm not sure my translation will be. Johan, you. Nectar. Refuse. You refuse to speak to me, so I write this letter instead. It's from Frederick Fretland to his brother. Uh, Simon did not. Bloody hell. Simon did not murder your Ruth. He was fond of his cousin. Ruth? Ruth is the daughter of Anna and Johan, which means the little girl in the photograph at the farmhouse. Oh, Edward. The Fretland girl was murdered. This is simply awful. Simon was working at the farm while I tended to the store. I would have seen him had he passed on the way up to the cliffs. They thought Simon killed Ruth. His own cousin. Ruth was... What's that word? Playing. Ruth was always playing on the rocks below the church. She must have fallen by accident. The note ends there. Frederick never finished it. And Johann never read it. Not that it would have made a difference. If Johann thought... The mob showed up for Simon. His father would have tried to protect him. September 17th. You would have been here, Betty. Rocks below the church. Isn't the church right above us? Yep. Edward! Come look at this. I don't want to. That's the cliff. Right there. Ah, the fuck. one in the note? I bet you a million clams. Where? See for yourself. I guess that could be where. Let's check it out. No, Lissy, wait. Oh, good. Excellent. Fantastic. Doing? This doesn't concern us. A little girl died. We're staying in her home, for God's sake. Are you completely without heart? Get yourself up here, Edward Harden, right this minute. Oh, God. He's like, all I care about is this other girl. My sister. And they're like, there's a... It's an easy climb. It's like looks child bad. murder happening here. I don't know about this. I'm old and frail. Whoopsie daisy. <clears throat> Whoopsie daisy. What is this? Where little Ruth died. You're being morbid. And this is a distraction. I'm here for Betty, not because some girl got herself. You insensitive brute. You're like the Tin Woodman, no heart. Uh, please look at me when I'm talking to you. Anyway, you know, you've grown cold and mean in that horrid study of yours. With only books and bugs to keep you company for years and years and years. There are other people in this world, you know. It's not all about you. You're going to do this. If not for Ruth, then for us. We're going to figure out what happened to the poor girl. Together. Ah, <coughs> <coughs> oh, pardon me. Okay. So there's uh, blood stains on these rocks, and there's something here. Something struck this bush. She must have landed on it when on her way down. That's ghastly, Edward. Is that blood? A girl could have hit her head on that rock. There would have been plenty of blood. It's awful. I think there's something behind it. Yep. Can you move the rock aside? There certainly is something behind it.
It must be Ruth's. Where's the head? Well, maybe the killer also decapitates dolls. Hold on. This pin. This is old. Very old. It looks like something from the from the Viking era. We are in the land of Vikings. This could be a thousand years old. It does not belong in a child's doll. Who cares? Ruth is dead, and you're obsessing about a rusty old pin? Let's go further out. Maybe we'll find more clues. Come on, old sport. It's not far. Can you wait just one minute so that I can catch my... breath? Huh. No, okay, not. The same path, Betty? Or am I just stumbling through darkness? I think so look at the flowers. I didn't realize I was going to negate the option for me to look at that. Alright, well. Up the hill, Edward. Here we go, buddy. Oh, what up, animal? We're cool. I'm just going to keep going up this hill. Trying to solve a murder. You can see clear beyond the edge of the world. Uh, one... Oh, teddy bear. <laughs> we need to take you out walking more often. So, the girl fell from up here. Was pushed, you mean. Can you see where she fell? Seeing as you're so concerned about me falling out of trees, I wouldn't want to risk falling off a cliff. He feels dizzy looking down. His heart does not favor heights. Certainly high enough to kill a child. If I had to go, this would be the way to do it. Soaring through the air like a bird. And landing like a rock. The stone, he notices, would, uh, would be the likely terminating point of the fall. If she fell head first on that rock, she'd have died instantly. Edward, honestly. You wanted to learn more. This is you learning more. She hit her head and fell into the bush where I found her doll. Happy now, Alice? I'm not. What was she doing up here in the first place? Playing? She was a child. Children play in dangerous places. There must be more to it. Let's find out where this path leads. No, absolutely not. <sighs> I don't have time for this nonsense. We're running out of daylight and Betty's still... We're still out there. Bum, 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 bum. Up Listen. the hill. Slow down. I can't keep up with you. Who knows what's up there? It's not worth the risk of falling and breaking something. Lissy? Are you there? Teddy. My word. Uh, look away, Lissy. Is this what happened to the villagers? Oh, good God. They killed themselves? It's one body. Let's not jump to conclusions. Oh, this is just ghastly. What made him do this? How long has he been? From the state of the body, perhaps a couple mm. of weeks. It depends on temperature and humidity. Was he executed? He could have kicked the chair away himself. But forward like that? Like if we just, I mean, if we take, I, not to speak out of turn, but it seems like the chair would either go sideways or backwards if he did it himself, not forward and to the left or right. The sign will tell us more. What does that say? God forgive me. Don't suicides go to hell? Isn't that what your father said when Stop. your mother Don't. drowned herself? Sorry. Do you think this has something to do with Ruth? Maybe she came across the hangman before she died. And it scared her. So she ran no. and... This happened later. Well, there's some consolation in that, I guess. Maybe it's the killer. The guilt ate him up and he offed himself. That's just speculation with no basis in fact. 
Who was he? One of the Fretlanders? If not Johan, or Frederick, then he's too old to be Simon. There's nothing more to do here. I'm going back. Let the poor soul rest in peace. Does it look like he's resting in peace? You're just going to leave him hanging? You're an insensitive brute. I'm here for Betty. This is... It's tragic, but really none of my concern. Oh, Betty, 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 always just Betty. You don't care about anyone else. What if that was me up there? Would you care then? All you do is obsess over a scarf and... and a hat and... Ugh. It's all I have of Betty. Betty, there she is again. Edward... The hanged man... He's someone. No matter what he did or didn't do, he deserves respect. Would you please just do this one decent deed? If not for me, then for yourself. Or for... For your Betty. What are you doing? You can't just pull him down by his legs. Try loosening the noose. I can't reach that far. Well, pick up the chair, idiot. through much worse. Interesting that they didn't animate that. Edward. It's been two days. If they're not back tonight... They're not coming back. Perhaps they left after their daughter died. Was murdered, you mean? Isn't that what we think happened? When tragedy befalls him, Edward thinks people tend to look for a scapegoat. Penny for your thoughts? Simplest solution he believes is often the correct one. The villagers believe Simon killed Ruth, so he most likely did it. Perhaps she fell by accident. So you don't think it was murder? It's difficult to say with any certainty. The boy could have pushed her. You're really not helping. Can we talk about this tomorrow? I'm sorry. You're Anna. exhausted. I buried a corpse today, Alice. I know. I'm sorry. Why don't you sleep in the guest bedroom? The couch is fine. The Fretlands could still come home. All right. Just don't come crying to me if you wake up with a crick in your neck. I'll be up for a while, if you feel like talking. Even go to the church. Hmm. I really thought I'd find Betty today. Well, I told you not to get your hopes up, Edward. I mean, we just got here. It's a big place. She could be anywhere. It's just the thought of her alone out there in the dark. She's a tough cookie, your Betty. Tougher than you, teddy bear. <laughs> that she is. I feel restless. You should sleep. I'm not sure I can. But yes, uh, I'll try. In a bit. Alright, so we're in the kitchen. Haven't been here yet. What did you find? 
Someone tried to burn this. Just like the book. Isn't that odd? It's addressed to Mrs. Fretland. My dearest Anna. It's from her sister, Margaret. Frederick's wife. The, the two brothers married sisters, remember? Yes, and it's adorable. Keep reading. I really shouldn't. Really? How else are we going to figure out what happened? Keep reading. My dearest Anna, I miss you so very, very much. The baby is due soon, and I wish for our family to reunite before... Uh, da, da, da. It's been seven years since the dreadful incident at the mine. Can we not convince Frederick and Johann to forgive and forget? Uh, I know there are things Frederick has not told me about what they found and why they parted ways. Their grudge is tearing us all apart. Frederick won't even let me speak to half of our neighbors, accusing them of treason. Uh, he's so very angry and full of regrets. It's eating him up. And we... And we what? The rest is unreadable. Margaret reached out to her sister. But I guess it didn't work. This was written before Simon was born. But burned recently. Okay. Okay, did not expect you to be there. Dear Mrs. Fretland, I trust this letter finds you and your husband in good health. Thank you for the gracious invitation to stay in your home this October. I hope it pres will present no inconvenience to your family. Uh, I am presently preparing for the Atlantic voyage on the SS Bergsfind. I'm planning to depart Boston later this month. I still have no word from my sister Elizabeth, though I hope she has made it to uh, Grovic, Grovic in, uh, in the time since the last letter. If this is the case, and if at all possible, I would greatly appreciate receiving a cable with the news. Elizabeth cannot... What? If Elizabeth cannot compensate you for the cost, I will of course, of course do so as soon as I arrive. In regards to the dates of my travels, I shall be arriving um, on the 15th. Okay. This is the letter he wrote. <clears throat> I feel restless. You should sleep. I'm not sure I can. But yes, I'll, I'll try in a bit. Oh, wait. Is that new? No, it's grayed out. These headlines make more sense now. Oh, no, it's not just new. Johan sells his share, and the cave-in occurs shortly thereafter, killing three people. Including the younger brother. The investor pulls out, leaving Frederick with the bills. Oh, I feel awful for everyone. Losing a brother? <coughs> losing the business? There were no happy endings here. Frederick Fretland. Thick as thieves before things took a turn. Don't you always say that much of our pain is self chosen? I wonder about that. It's the same photograph we saw in the store. Except this one's whole. So the brother who owns the store Frederick. was angry with Johann before. before Ruth. Because. Because of the mine. It all comes back to the mine. The mine must have been a big deal for Grovik. Grovik. An opportunity to do more than live hand to mouth. 
what a blow it must have been to lose it all. Hmm. What are you doing? Betty will want these back. I don't think it's healthy. Not for now, you to... please. I'm exhausted. Quite the day, huh? I'm ready to pass out. Where will you sleep? Uh, I'll be up for a while. My mind's simply racing. Don't stay up late. Wake me if you hear the Fretlands arriving. And I'll keep my eyes open for any ghosts that might want to haunt you in your sleep. There are no... Hush now. Sleep. Chief Moon! Day three. Where are you? Upstairs. Teddy, is that you? This is her room. Hmm? Are you paying attention? Ruth, can you imagine? One moment you're living a perfectly happy life. And then, nothing. Darkness, forever and ever. Maybe there's something here that can tell us what happened to her. This is a waste of my time. We might be the only ones left to tell her story, Edward. You're just being melodramatic. <sighs> I'll help you look. God, she's fucking pissed. She made her bed that morning, before she... Or her parents did. It doesn't matter. It tells us nothing. Why are you like this today? Betty's not the only person in the world that matters. She matters the most to me. Ain't that the truth. Ruth was an artist. This is very primitive. Have you ever met a child, Edward? She wasn't Monet. She was eight. The fuck? This kid should be a genius. That's Ruth and her family on one side of the aisle. Simon and his father on the other. The community divided. See? Good art, Edward. Tells you a story. She found something. Where's that supposed to be? The cave. Or the... Mine. Could be. But what did she find? Something important enough to draw. That must be Ruth and Simon's fathers. Perhaps. They weren't on the best of terms. They look like they want to kill each other. To a child, maybe it looked worse than it was. Children are more insightful than you give them credit for <coughs> there. <coughs> I do like the guy in the the guy on the right with the blonde hair. He's just chilling. He's like, I'm just getting a drink. He's hanging out. They're screaming at each other. You fucking idiot. It's like, Casper, where's the champagne? Ruth never finished this. What does that spell? F O R B. For Banelson. The curse. 
What is that figure supposed to be? It's creepy. A figment of her imagination. But the box she drew. It looks like this box under her desk. Really? Let me see. Pull it out. There's that what pendant. Is I believe this might qualify as actual treasure. Is that Norwegian money? Sort of, but ancient. Viking coins. Are they valuable? Not in terms of monetary value, but historically. Well, they belong in a museum. Looks like Ruth had her own private museum. Thanks, Indiana. A child have these artifacts. She must have enjoyed collecting and playing with them. These are much too precious to play with. She should have given these to an adult. She's... She was a child, Edward. To her, they were just... Shiny toys. Wait! The pin! On the doll! This is where it came from. Her collection. But where did she find these treasures? If we're to believe her drawing, perhaps the mine. She may have found a gravesite. Wherever she found them, she wanted to keep them hidden. You think someone found out? These items wouldn't necessarily be worth much, except to a historian or archaeologist. What if this is how... I mean, if someone learned she'd been collecting treasures, they might be willing to do terrible things. Well, you're not wrong. There's a story here. The treasure box, the drawings. The overactive mind of an imaginative child. She didn't imagine the Viking artifacts. You shouldn't be so dismissive. The drawings could be her way of dealing with traumatic this events. This is what happens when I read you the principles of psychology. You get notions. You say that like it's a bad thing. Ruth was troubled. The village was troubled. And is that a bell? A church bell. Someone's here. Maybe Betty. Why would Betty ring the church bell? Perhaps she's in trouble. I need to get to the church right now. Wait, isn't it more likely to be the person you saw the other night? We should be I careful. I told you, I'm not sure that was anything. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'll catch up with you before you get there. I need a minute to think about... about all of this. Ah, fuck. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. Mm -mm. I God, I don't like this. Fuck. Okay. Still going. Uh. That stupid lightning strike that happened early in the game with that shadowy figure. July 24th, memorial service. A commemoration of the accident at the mine this past summer. No services after that. Hey, Beeb. Uh, it's going well. Oh, it is intense. Do you think that maybe no. Betty... No. I'd know. But... You wouldn't understand. Elizabeth and I... We have a... A bond. God, Edward. Your obsession with her is really starting to break. Uh... 
Yeah. God. Yeah, early in the game, uh, there was a like a lightning strike that went off, and there was like a shadowy figure in the window, and boy, that has set me into an intensity. Someone in there. Gone fishing? God is not here. Well, of course he isn't. You won't find God in a church. God is the wind in the trees, the grass between your toes, the brook that runs That's through. That's nature, not God. Who did this? Someone who'd lost their faith. Can you peek through the boards? I don't want to do that. See anyone? No, I listen. The bell. They're still in there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Great. Hello? I heard the bell. Oh, this is giving me I'm here to help. Duties. These boards look flimsy enough to break. I can tell you're very hesitant and nervous. Yeah, I am. The echo becomes an Edward. Mm. You had it in you, old spook. Be quiet. Betty? Are you here? Hello? I don't have any control over this. this. Is Edward Harden. Uh, I'm looking for my sister, Stop Elizabeth. Stop shouting, Edward. We're alone. There are only ghosts here. There are no ghosts. I don't know about that. What's this rope for? The bell. This is the bell we heard ringing? I don't see any other bells. So you have to stand here and pull this rope to ring it? Yes. But there was no one here. You didn't see anyone, right? No. No one. Ghosts. I'm telling you. It's ghosts! So what happened to the hunchback of Grovick? They must be here still. There's only the one exit. Maybe it was the wind. The church bell's too heavy. It can't have been the wind. I mean... Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was the wind. There's no one here. Yeah. I don't like that sound. Please stop. Stop it. And we'll just keep pulling it. Stop it. Lissy. Look. Betty's gloves. They are definitely Betty's. Oh, she Pete's got these sake. in Boston before she left for New York. She bought them at Woolworth. I remember the day she She's here. Where? And why would she leave her clothes lying around? It doesn't make Bread sense. Crumbs. She's sending me a message. She knew I'd recognize her gloves. Her hat. She's left a trail for me to follow, like Ariadne's red thread. We're not in the lab. Betty will have left more crumbs. Betty, 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 you're turning into such a pill. You want me to you want me to ring the bell some more? Hang on here. Hold on, hold on. Remember, I don't like the you don't like the sound. Really remember, let's go ahead and pull this some more. Stop it! Stop it! Oh, stop it! Stop it! Betty, 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 Betty. What happened here? The sign on the door. God is not here. Their faith was challenged, and it didn't survive. That was a creaking that I did not want to hear. church book a record of births and deaths so we can find out what happened to the people in the village and uh, 
Elizabeth. I mean, if she was dead... Her name would be in the book. Vandals. Tore it to pieces. I don't think the missing pages left the church. Look. How many pages are missing? I counted four. They're probably all still here. I know. Let's make it a competition. One nil to team me. What? I wanted you to find that one. I know what a rotten loser you are. Okay. We're in a church. Thought you didn't believe in God. I do believe in civility. Found another one? Just one more page missing. Oh wait, no, I don't have time to read this. I need to find that other page. The last sermon that was held here. What does it say? Uh, the vicar's handwriting is hard to decipher and the language. Um, hmm. He talks about the village being divided for 20 years. This sermon was held on the anniversary of the accident this past summer. He's asking the congregation to help heal old wounds, to forgive, and move on. Something to the effect of you sit in separate aisles in God's house. Like Ruth's drawing. I told you, she was perceptive. Tilly Verandre. Edward? Forgive each other. It addresses Johann and Frederick directly. But I wonder if they were even here. Remember the wedding picture? They were close friends once. How could they allow their grudge to escalate until... <sighs> you call each other traitors, but the only thing you've betrayed are the bonds that unite us. Here's something else. Many of you believe Grovik was cursed 20 years ago. God has not cursed you. This curse is of your own making. Ruth Strong mentioned a curse. What do you think that means? It means they believe they were cursed and that they needed something or someone to blame for their misfortune. It sounds like Grovik was split in two between those who stood by Johann and those who supported Frederick. Because of Ruth? The sermons from before that. No, this is all about the preceding 20 years of division and disagreements. Found another one. You get it. It's right here. Oh, okay. Thanks. Pre appreciate it. Two for two. <laughs> a tie. Good job, Teddy. Stop, Old Lucy. This is not a game. Betty's out there. Of horse feathers. Stop being so gosh darn tedious, Edward. Biddy, biddy, biddy. Will you ever shut up about your precious Betty? Put those pages back in the book, and I'll stop trying to cheer you up. Okay. This book goes back years. It lists births and deaths. Here's the third Fretland brother. The one who died in the cave-in. Someone added the word for Banelson, probably quite recently. What does that mean again? Curse. That word is all over this book. Not just the men who died in the mine, but... other deaths in the last 20 years. Ruth's drawing and the sermon both mentioned a curse. What do you think it means? I don't know. Surprisingly few births. Perhaps they blame that on the curse as well. Probably. Look here. Ruth Elsa Fretland. She was buried in the cemetery. And the next entry, Simon Fretland. Now this is interesting. Simon is dead? Oh, that's dreadful. He drowned the day after Ruth died. Probably no coincidence. See what's scribbled next to it? More? Murder. Who 
killed him? Ruth's father? Or the mob that trashed the store? It doesn't say. <laughs> After the children, a half dozen <gasps> deaths in a single week. Good God. The curse. It's listed as the cause for every single death. Maybe there really was a curse. Primitive superstition. But something changed after Ruth and Simon. It might explain why there's no one around. Edward, if it killed everyone, how's that not a curse? What does that word say? Next to those names at the bottom. For... For a... Uh... Traitor. Yeah, okay. So can I... So two traitors and then a bunch of curses? One murder. Edward? What's wrong? Final entry. There's... There's no name. Alice. What if... Oh. Edward, no. Betty. It doesn't mean she's... She's not dead. She can't be. I know. I know. Teddy. I need to see the grave for myself. It's not Betty. But Betty's still alive. Teddy? Where are you going? Don't leave me! Edward! You better not be here, Betty. I'll never forgive you. Where is it? What am I? What am this one. It's unmarked. Uh, no, 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 please. Oh, God, no. What are you doing? Have you gone completely mad? Yep, we're digging up graves now. God. I really don't want to animate this stuff, which is probably good. It's not her. It's not Betty. It's it's not her. Oh, Edward. What have you done? I It's not Elizabeth. I I, I was so afraid. You're a monster. But I had to be sure. If Betty... To hell with your Betty! When did she ever shed a tear for you? Don't talk about my baby sister like or that. Or what? Or what, Edward? What will you do? Ignore us? Banish us? You've spent your entire life chasing her. When are you going to do something useful with what's left of it? Uh, quiet! Just... Leave me be. Fine. Lizzie? Alice? Come back. Don't leave me alone. Please. Come back. I, I need you. What? No, 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 no. Look at any of this other stuff. Okay. Ah, uh, so she like just disappeared. Cool. Uh. I was afraid you left me. Now listen to me. Lizzie? Where are you? <gasps> Lizzie. Hey. 
Listen, please listen to me. I didn't mean what I said. I, I... Of course you meant it. Everything's always about Betty. Betty, Betty. I care about you both. Until it really matters. Then it's obvious who matters more. I thought she was dead. I wish she was! Don't. You deserve to be alone. Please, talk to me. What's there to talk about? You can't keep running away from me. I won't let you. You think you own me? That you control me? That you get to decide how I feel and what I do every minute of every day? That I'm your puppet? Your little plaything? Well, fuck you, Edward Charles Harden! I never should have come here with you on this pointless chase! Now, be reasonable. What are you doing? What I should have done years ago. Maybe now you'll learn to appreciate this. Now listen to me. Please listen. Hear me out. Don't do this. You can't do this to me. I need you. I'm not whole without you. I, I can't lose you. I, I can't live without you. Don't, 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 please don't, don't, no, 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 no. What? No. What the fuck is happening? Your mother and father would be ashamed. Elizabeth would be ashamed. They did not think you deserved their love, so they abandoned you. Don't. Oh, my child. Mm -hmm. We are all that you have. And we love you. I want to go backwards. We are here. With us. You are never alone. Do not forget. No, I... Never. Never. I never forget. I am never alone. What the fuck is this game? Oh cool, achievement. And we're definitely not alone. Day four. Wake up, Edward. I don't want to. No, 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 no. I don't want to talk to the statue lady. Stop hiding. He has lost an entire day and fears for her. He fears for Betty. Thought he'd left his demons behind him in this prison. But they had come with him. Without her, he is nothing. Her absence feels like a drowning. Without us, you are nothing. You cannot hide from us. Where's Lizzie? Alice is not here. Bring her back. Please. I need her. Alice does not love Elizabeth like you do. She loves me. Not like I do, Edward. I'm so tired. Please. What do you want? I think of you so often. You have no idea. You just want me to forgive you so that we can keep looking for your precious, perfect Betty. She needs us. <laughs> She never needed you, Teddy Bear. And she certainly doesn't need us. I can't find her on my own. It's just too bad, my darling Edward. Because we're done playing second fiddle to little sis. Wait, don't go. I, I'm, I'm talking to... 
to you, Lissy. Oh. oh, God. Please. Lissy? Listen. You can't keep vanishing on me. Trent. Why are you so angry? You do not know anger. <laughs> Did you ever meet my father? Alice does not want to speak with you. And what about you? Are you going to help me? God helps those who help themselves. I don't need God's help. I need Lissy. Do you, though? Did you ever? What? Of course, I... Hmm... Um... No, I don't want to... Alice... Don't go. Hear me out. I depend on you both. You can never depend on other people, Edward. I'm not sure you count as other people. Everyone leads one way or another. You don't. You can't. Is that a challenge? Stop playing games. Are you ordering me, teddy bear? I'm asking you. Didn't your father always tell you to stand up for yourself? To be a real man and not a sissy? Maybe that's why he put the gun to his head and pulled the trigger. Kaboom! He was so disappointed about what his only son had turned into. You're a monster. Takes one to know one. Holy freak. Fucking got him. I gave you this jacket. Betty. We're here. She go outside, maybe? Probably. <clears throat> Unless I have to go put this jacket on there. Oh, oh, maybe she was in there. Room. She must listen to me. Let's see, I'm tired of chasing you. Alice, be reasonable. I'm trying to talk to you. Lissy, look. Her jacket. I'm sure it wasn't here yesterday, Jesus which means Christ, Betty was Teddy. here. Perhaps when we were out yesterday. Oh, she, Betty, she Be Betty, 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 Betty. You love Betty more than you love us. But don't you see? What has Betty done that we haven't? What can she do that we cannot? We've always been there for you. Why do you keep looking for her? She's real. You're not. So? What? Hey. You what is real. Hey. Who are real to you. We'll never be the same. She does not want you. Who are you talking about? Why do you think Betty left? She was sick and tired of us. She wanted to escape. Like mother. Drowning herself because she couldn't stand being around us. Like father. 
bad right in the coconut. Stop. You drive them all away, Edward. All into death. He's... But not us. We're always here for you. I beg you. You are never alone. Stop! Leave me alone, both of you! You want to be alone? You really want to be alone? Fine. Listen. Come back. Please. Don't leave me. I lied. I don't want you to leave me alone. Achievement. Day five. You? Okay, got scared at the mannequin that's been there the whole time. Cool. Oh, good. The fog's back. That awesome. Are you upstairs? Betty, I'm coming. That looks like it's coming from the room that I think is locked. from the door. Good, good. There's just been a dead body in this house the whole no fucking time. Addressed to his wife. This is the work of a man in great distress, he thinks. A man in his wits end. Did you notice the handwriting, Betty? <clears throat> he was clearly distraught. Knock, ere knock. Enough is enough. After decades of strife, I pray that God will to me. Forgive me. I am tired of secrets. For 20 years I have kept my silence about our discovery, but my silence has only led to misfortune, and my cowardice has only led to death. I will make Frederick pay for what he has done to us, for what they have done to our Ruth. When it is over, I will let the ocean take me to you and Ruth. May God forgive me. Anna was already dead when he wrote this. He had no one else to confess to. What now, Betty? 
Johann went to confront his brother, probably at Frederick's farm. And then... You said this was a gift from another unlucky suitor. Betty would not, he believes, have left this lighter here by accident. He knows the lighter is precious to Elizabeth, an object of sentimental value. It's precious to you. You wouldn't have left it here unless... A signpost. A breadcrumb. You follow Johann to Frederick Fretland's farm, and then to the mine. But Betty would not have stopped at the farm. She would have gone away to the mine. Johann has went to his brother's farm, and Edward fears Betty would have followed. You wouldn't let this go, Betty. You'd follow your story to the end. All the way to the end. Okay. So where is Frederick's farm? you to this place. All these fragments. You would piece them together into a story, wouldn't you, Betty? So, what do we know? The heart of it all, there are two brothers, separate but equal. The heart of it all, there are two brothers. Johann and Frederick are partners. And on good terms. Something happens in the mine. Disagreements lead to a falling out. And at the end of it all, 20 years later, Johann walks this path to confront Frederick. Was this your doing, Johann? Did you burn your brother's farm to the ground? Betty, did you witness their fall? Betty? Betty? Oh, God. What am I, what am I looking for? Betty! Do I need to go further? Ah, here we go. Okay. 
Oh, God. This music and the loneliness is giving me the heebie jeebies. Simon's grave. Born December 5th, 1909. Died September 17th, 1923. Why bury Simon here? Not at the cemetery. His wife's grave is also here. Perhaps Frederick wanted nothing to do with the church or with their God. I could really use your imagination, Betty. You figured this out in no time. Elizabeth! Okay, so then <sighs> fuck. I'm just gonna give me the same animation again, okay. Check the fire a little more carefully, I guess. Ah, here we go. What do you reckon, Betty? Let's try Simon's birthday. Another Viking artifact, Betty. Most likely from the same treasure Ruth found. Postmarked in Boston. Curious coincidence. Dear Frederick, I hope this letter, it's in English, Betty. Hope this letter finds you and the boy in good health. We're concerned about you both. No word from you for almost two years now. Hmm. All of us still heartbroken about Margaret's passing. We know things have been difficult for you and Simon. Mr. Fretland, we expect you to take care of this problem. If the discovery is made public, the authorities will intervene and the mine will be shut down. Should this happen, we will consider it a breach of our contract and we will withdraw our investment. You and your brother will be responsible for all debts and losses. Johann must be convinced to wall up the chamber. We have already dealt with the worker who made the discovery. Oh no. Mining company. Great. This must be for that locked shed. Cool. Great. Yep, that's what I want to do. He's going that locked shed. I hope our guardian angel watched over you. Alright, Betty. So what happens next in your story? What was unearthed to cause this avalanche of misfortune? What triggered such a bitter disagreement between brothers? 
Johan and Frederick discover something in the mine. A cave or chamber of archaeological value. They argue about what to do. If the discovery is made public, it's the end of their enterprise. Johan is convinced or paid to walk away. Their secret stays hidden. Then, a few months later, the accident. Three men die. The investors pull out. The mine shuts down. Frederick's up to his neck in debt. being in here at all cursed mine in Grovi locals struggle with bad crops and livestock deaths and blame it on they thought they were cursed because of the mine a thing like that becomes self-fulfilling if you believe you're cursed every misfortune feeds the delusion The feud grew and festered the cold belly of Grovik, Grovik, a cancerous beast born from the wreckage of the mine. An imagined curse became the crutch. A frontland feud tears the village apart, setting neighbor against neighbor. And then, Ruth stumbles across the secret in the mine. After all this time, Truth may finally come to light, but she dies. And the day after, Simon is murdered. It's a catalyst. Old grievances resurface. No matter who you stand with, you're a traitor. Things escalate. More people die. From disease, despair, suicide. Murder? <coughs> Sorry. Very intense moment here. Here I am coughing. All because of the mine. Because of what they found there. And what they covered up. There was no one to stop it, Betty. They were alone. That's the real curse of Grovik. Isolation. We in Fuck off, Crow. Yep, fuck this off. This place is cursed. Ridiculous. Ruth was here the day she fell. I'm looking for something that was never there. Am I truly searching in this desolate hole under the mountains? What am I truly searching for? Is there a truth here that I haven't yet grasped? You were here, Betty. You saw Ruth. Maybe you tried to help, but she ran all the way to the cliff where do you know what happened Betty did you witness it hello Betty are you in there please answer me Oh, fuck. Oh, 
This is mother's brooch. You always wore this. You wouldn't take it off unless you left it here for a reason. What am I not seeing? No, I don't want to. I don't. No, 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 no. Don't put your face there. What are you? Are you? Mm -mm. What are you doing? No, no. Oh, great. Fucking idiot. You better start running. You better start running. Cow, Edward, idiot. Edward, <gasps> Edward, Betty, Elizabeth, is that, is that you? Edward, where are you? I'm on my way, Betty. Wait for me. Edward, stay where you are. I'm coming. Coming, Betty. Edward! I'm almost there. I hope I went up the wrong path, or up the correct path. I'll be there right after I go around this roundabout. Hang on, I'm over at the church. so worried I, I I it's her he knows it's Betty he knows her well her scarf her hat her gloves it's all there she's all there Elizabeth he knows Elizabeth so well every part of her her son her clothes she's complete and she's here he's found her look your brooch mother's brooch you must have lost it at the mine. Let me put it on for you, Betty. I wouldn't want you to lose it again. <sighs> She's been dead. For 30 years, Edward. What? Elizabeth was never here. But we didn't come for her. We came for Johan, and Anna, and Frederick, and Simon, and. and Ruth. We're here to tell their stories. No. Elizabeth. She's here. I... You know Betty died when she was a baby. She drowned in the pond. And you found her. You were just 11. You carried her to 
for your mother. And your mother... She hated you for that. She could never forgive you for bringing her baby to her. And you could never forgive yourself for what she did after. You always forget this. Because you don't want to be alone. So you bring Betty back. Again. And again. To New York. To Boston. To the house. But always just out of reach. Never quite there. The scent of her. The echo of her. But never really her. All it does is make you lonelier. But the thing is, Edward, you're never alone. You have us. And you'll always have us. Betty's... She was never there for you. She couldn't be. You can't lose us. We're a part of you. Forever. And ever. And ever. But you need to let Betty go now. There's not room for all of us in there. I couldn't save you, Elizabeth. I'm so sorry. Greta Gaynor. To my biggest fan, best wish. It is as painful to wake from a vision as it is to be born anew. What the fuck is right? Um, cool. She meant... Day six. Bye, Betty. Okay. Lissy? I'm outside. Are you up? We're outside. It's a beautiful... Had your noodle juice yet? I might be weaned off the stuff. Boo. Don't lose your taste for tea, old fruit. It keeps you human. Ow. We have unfinished business. We do? The final piece of the puzzle. Ruth. Come on. Let's go back to where it started. We have an appointment with a ghost. Such an amazing view, isn't it? And the air. Ugh. Why did we come here, Betty? To Grovik. Well. What if he thinks the answer is simple and logical? A conversation in a public place? A name subconsciously registered? He was drawn here as though this place had been uh, has an internal weight to it Elizabeth may be a specter he thinks but she still holds power over me overheard a letter to Frederick the one you found in his safe from Boston I may have overheard a conversation somewhere paid it no attention but the name stuck and Betty and I spun a story around it that Put us on this path. Do you really believe that? I mean, how often are you around people? Uh, 
Some places have gravity. What do you say? Gravelick's gravity pulled us across the Atlantic Ocean? Gravity? No, I'm not saying that. That's irrational. But you believe it, don't you? That we were summoned to tell their story. To find my sister. But Betty's not. She was never here. It doesn't make sense. I'm a man of science. I don't know what to believe. And yet, here we are. All three of us. Is this what you wanted to show me? I wanted to be close to her. Do you believe in ghosts, Edward? You know I don't. Well, you've been chasing one for years. That's different. What about me? Us? You're not ghosts. You're alive. Fair enough. So what really happened to Ruth? So much misery is entropic, he knows. Chance events that cascade into an accidental avalanche that destroys people. She must have been killed, thinks Edward. Can't have all been because of an accident. God damn, I don't know. She was probably murdered. By Simon? Simon is a convenient scapegoat, he thinks. They needed one to focus their rage, blinding them to facts. Sometimes the right answer is right in front of you. He knows, even though you'd rather it wasn't. It had to be Simon. Are you sure? Does it matter? They're both dead. It matters to me. So she ran from the mine. And she came here. And then someone pushed her? If only she had wings. Like a bluebird. She could have soared away on autumn winds. But why was she killed? Edward thinks of Ruth's treasure. Ancient things of value to her, but cursed, if that was the right word, by history she was unaware of. The mine, he knows, was dangerous, and not just literally. It represented something more, and, and it held secrets many wanted buried. Because she was playing where she should have been. <coughs> the secret the Fretlands had kept for a generation. If people learned the truth, it might tear the community apart. <coughs> so she was murdered, and the village was cursed. I hope she's at peace. And with God. Do you think that's where everyone's gone? He has no faith in an afterlife. He saw into He saw into his mother's dead eyes. He saw the gunshot wound in his father's head. He knew even And he knew even then that heaven was a lie. Edward believes there's only darkness after death, but, strange as it may seem, Alice has her own beliefs, and it feels almost cruel to deny her those. Heaven. They're dead. I don't know what that means. Maybe there is more. I can't stop you from hoping. We'll never know what happened to everyone in Gorvik. We tried our best. We'll remember them. All of them. Maybe that will give them some peace in the afterlife. Could this be your book, Edward? The one you've been wanting to write? A story about people who are isolated. Left behind by the world. You can give them all a proper ending. With no annoying loose threads. Edward! Is that... Our boat but how who cares let's catch it before it sets out on another adventure i don't understand how this can be it must have been the wind whatever helps you sleep at night teddy bear let's blouse while the weather's still good i need my suitcase so get a wiggle on old boy i'm going to say my goodbyes to all the things I don't think we'll be back. I'll meet you at the house. <laughs> My goodness. Ah, righty ho. 
No rush. We have all day. Now nah, we're good. We'll hustle up the hill here and I do my suitcase. Come on, Teddy. Pack your things. I'll meet you by the boat. Do you never sit still? Don't be a wet blanket. Let's make like the wind and get out of here. Do I look any different or just it's the same? Several very smart, like, uh, Come on. Let's go. travel cuts Let's go. that they've used in this. Is still cold. It's a fjord, Lissy, and it's almost winter. There will be snow when we get back to Hanover. The house will be warm. Are we going to be all right, Edward? I think so. I'm sure, we'll be fine. That is the end of the game. We'll let these credits play out. Uh, that was awesome. I really, I really like that. It was very weird in the back half. But, uh, big fan of that. Thirteen four hundred and fifty. Everything left is secret. I only got one non-story related achievement. <clears throat> so I just complete all the sketches. Exhausted all Lizzie conversations. 
Lizzie's getting a bit tired of you, teddy bear. Play the piano. That was what I got. Good night, little girl. Row, row, row your boat. None of these have guides. For them. So that, that's unfortunate. Good night. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching, Beeb. Appreciate it. Surprise you're still up. Thought you would have fallen asleep. I'm assuming because the boat is still rowing that this is one of the secret achievements is let the credits play out. Because that sound is still going. So we'll hang out for a couple minutes. So the game is $20. It took about 2 hours and 45 minutes to finish. Um, it's really it's really engaging and really engrossing. Uh, and man, I really liked the end of it. Like, from the point where it was super interesting, from the point where they went to the church and, like, the, the rest of that was just, like, just fucking, like, batshit weird. And I, I was all in on it. All about it. This, this was a game that I pointed out on a Week in Review, which is a show that I do, um, that felt like it was a very Sean-ass game. Where, like, I read the description and I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And then I watched the trailer and I was like, oh, fuck. Like, this is something really neat and unique. And that's what it was. Very neat. Very unique. I really liked the story. Fuck yeah. Edward and Alice. They're coming back, baby. Bam. I don't know how long. This game's been on Steam for a while, but I don't know how long. So maybe there's, maybe there's other achievement guys. That I can find for it. Come on, give me a hundred. Give me another hundred gamer score. I wonder how many sketches there are. Ah, f that sounds still going. Hmm. Wonder there's like true Steam achievements. Let's see. D R A U G A Achievements. Steam community. That'll work. Two roots for men work out depending on hours. Life is but a dream. Piano man, home alone. Maybe it's not here. Knock knock. Ugh. This ha this has to be it. You just sit here for a while. Achievement guide? The artist. Oh, there are nine. Okay. Play the piano. Fuck. Did you click on the ropes? Oh, okay. I knew I should have kept pulling on that rope. Damn it. What was it? Codependent. You have to click on the rope. The rope in the church six or seven times. I think I pulled it four. So I just needed to pull it a couple more. And that would have gotten it. Damn it. This is unhelpful. Uh, do, do, do. Achievement guide. Same thing.
Oh god. Oh my goodness. Okay, so life is but a dream. That's what I'm looking at, right? Uh, true achievements. Hang on. Stick with me here, folks. Life is but a dream. Row, row, row your boat. Okay, so the description is wait until the final credits ended. It can take 30 minutes. Do not alt-tab the game. After the credits go away, you'll hear Edward uh, Edward Rose, but you'll need to wait until he finishes and goes off the boat. And only then go to the main menu. So I guess just hang out. <laughs> uh, okay, well, I'm not going to hang out here on stream for 30 minutes, but uh, since I know that. So I'll have to go back. Probably have to do a... Hmm. I wonder... Let's see what this... Let's see what this says. Piano Man. Oh, uh, when it's all over and it's time to leave. Okay, so I'm going to have to do a, a whole complete playthrough again. If I want to get all the achievements. So one of the secret achievements is called To Ruth from Edward. When it's all over and it's time to leave. Uh, you need to go upstairs into Ruth's room and interact with the bed. Conversational, conversational is time. Talk to Alice whenever you can. Thirty minutes. Oh boy. When Alice. All right, well, I guess I'll have to go through and do that a different time. As for now, uh, yeah, that was great. I really like the game a lot. Um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it as well. It was very weird, very cool, um, really interesting, and got real bizarre there at the end. Uh, but I liked it a lot, so... Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, this full playthrough of Dragon. Uh, good game. $20. If you like kind of story-based stuff, uh, you can you can go pick it up. If you like games that probably have a fairly easy achievement list as well, this is worth it. You probably would be able to complete this in about three hours or so. To be fair, if you did watch this whole video, you probably don't have a reason to go buy the game. Didn't think that one through. Anyway, real good game. Uh, yeah, thank you for watching. We'll see you later there, YouTube.